I guess you're pretty proud of yourself, huh, Jeff? Good afternoon, Conrad. Come on, dude. Let's get this started. You said we're doing a podcast. We're going to do a podcast. Not because I fucking want to do a podcast, but because I'm contractually obligated. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. You're listening to my world with goofy ass Jeff Jarrett. (laughs) We couldn't do it out. We couldn't do it without the Hall of Famer, my friend and yours. That's double J, Jeff Jarrett, J E double F, J A. Why is this funny? Conrad. People just saw you try to fucking murder Morgan's grandpa. I came to do a job. I do it every time I step up to the plate. It wasn't a lot of fun doing the reading the research from Derek. He did a hell of a job on this. But uh, we're going to do this podcast, Conrad, and I can assure you, I'm going to say some things today that you don't want to hear about your father-in-law because everybody glosses over the real Ric Flair. Everybody glosses over the nature boy. Everybody glosses over. If you want to go right for the jugular, let's go. I mean, listen, he's an active alcoholic. And if you want me to go there, I'll go there. Well, uh, you're a fucking egomaniac who wants to make everything about you. Why the shit were you even there? You made sure you inserted yourself in the press conference of Ric Flair. You work for WWE. Just go the fuck away. Effie was right. This is bullshit, dude. Like, okay, Conrad, let's, 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 uh, well, let's, let's, let's let's drill down to some ad free stuff. Right. Okay. Jeff, you think, you know, anybody at the mayor's office? Yeah. Okay. Voila. Ric Flair day. Hey, we've got this idea to call it not the fairgrounds, the flaregrounds. Yep. I can make that happen. Mayor's cough, mayor's office again. Happy to, Hey, can you get a proclamation done? Yeah. Oh, I felt feel good today. Jeff, can you sit up on the podium and do your job and mine? I'm a third generation promoter. My grandmother started promoting wrestling, uh, not in the seventies, not in the sixties, not in the fifties in the forties. Oh, we would like for you to be a part of this. Hey, do you know anybody that could MC this, uh, uh, um, press conference? Um, the voice of Tennessee, the voice of the Titans, my friend, Mike Keith. Hey, Mike, w- would you, uh, I know training camp's about to start, but you, could you come down and host the press conference? Sure. Okay. That's just talking about the press conference of what? Oh, Eagle maniac, Jeff Jarrett. I, I had, I, I was doing that all for the event. Hey, Rick, I'm really happy for you. Hey, man, this thing sold out. Hey, guys, do you know anybody over at the uh, municipal auditorium? Oh, uh, I've only worked in this town for 30-something years. Conrad, do I need to keep going on and on? And you want to say that I'm making this about me? Uh, I, I believe the mayor's office was your idea, and you promised the mayor and delivered a deputy mayor. I don't even know what the fuck a deputy mayor is, but, of course, the assistant manager does. Uh, you the know deputy, what the deputy the mayor man. has this thing called a life and he's on his, uh, anniversary out of town. Well, why did we move? didn't communicate that with us? And now you're going to hang your hat on. No, I'm not hanging my hat on anything. You think the deputy mayor didn't do a good job. She did a wonderful job. She did a great job. I, I just think it's, it's, it's pretty funny that you always find a way to insert yourself into everything. Conrad, did you see. No, you probably didn't. You're probably over at the Palm Steakhouse with Megan eating 15. uh, uh, Conrad, I tried to help your father-in-law up. Literally, I said, Jay, don't do this. I get why Jay slighted. Look, if you really want to get right down to it, who's the one who took Jay Lethal out of New Jersey and said, Jay, you got a spot in TNA? I don't, I don't guess listen. who got him fired at TNA. Rick, Hulk, Eric. How Dick would Rick, get, how would Rick get Jay? How would Rick get Jay fired? He came begging for a job at TNA because he had 18 wives and 3000 uh, payments to be made. And uncle Sam was breathing down his ro- throat and he had a wonderful retirement match in Orlando and WrestleMania. And then all of a sudden he's going to come back and say, Hey, I want a job. You talk about an egomaniac Hulk Hogan is debuting January of 2010. That's a whole nother story, but Rick's got to start the same night. How much sense C- Conrad, we could go down the every rabbit hole you want to go. If you want to, this podcast today is about my world and my recollection of my entire career with Ric Flair starting out in 1982. 
So do we want to go down the podcast road or do we want to keep going in rabbit holes? Well, we can go down the rabbit holes all you want, but the reality is this, you, you knew that there was a plan. You knew that I didn't feel good that day. I wasn't even there. Then I left early. Cause as you know, it's been well-established. I was so sick. I shit my pants at the press conference. Yes, she so did. I got the hell out of Dodge and I'm gone sick. And when I find out you literally stabbed my father-in-law in the head with a, with a high heel shoe and listen, there's magic in wrestling. No magic son. What, what do you do? What? There should have been police involvement. If Rick wasn't such an old head, you'd be behind bars. That's a fucking crime, Jeff. This ain't fucking playing around kid. What do you think the nature boy signed up for? He cussed me out, cussed me out in front of my wife, little hanger all D David Crockett, who's a complete jabroni. Every person in WCW covered up for his BS. He gets on that dock and says, oh, we didn't end the right way. Yeah, because you ran it out of business, David Crockett. You ran your freaking old man's promotion out of business. And who was leading the charge? The nature boy, Ric Flair. Let, let's just put, look, it, when, when, when everything went national, somebody had TBS and Turner and Ted Turner had all the guns binded and somebody had USA Network. Who kicked their ass? It's because the Crockett's put Ric Flair in charge. Oh, the nature boy. Ric Flair couldn't balance a lemonade stand, and there's proof in the pudding there. So you guys, it look, it, it, and Crockett, all the, that whole doc made me sick. All this feel-good BS, Crockett, we're going to end right, and Rick, and oh. He got exactly what he deserved in that parking lot. He wants to slight nature, uh, 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 Jay Lethal and say you're an opening card guy? Even if you really, really believe that, do you tell the guy that to his face and take all the hope? Do you do? You do if you're an egomaniac like Flair. Well, I can't defend that, as you know. I like Jay, and I wish this wouldn't have happened. But I expected better out of you. Jay's not my fucking business what did partner. You expect better out of me for seriously to not to not beat up Ric Flair in a parking lot, dude. That <laughs> like that's not too much to ask. Oh, did you hear him crying? It's a hard way. It's a hard way. Like it's the first time. Jesus, seriously. Well, you realize that you've crossed the line now. Oh, and I'm glad that I did now. You know, you're double nickels. You ain't what you used to be. Oh. And Andrade is going to go upside that head. Oh God. That's listen, look at my history in Lucha Libre. Andrade is a dime a dozen, my friend. Oh, really? I, I, I literally there's 15, 20 that I faced over the years. Latin lover, psycho clown, uh, Ray Mysterio, Dr. Wagner, literally one after another, after another, go look up on YouTube, my triple a success Andrade. I, I mean, if he ain't a curtain jerker, I don't know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Give me those big eyes. Okay. L literally. Okay. If he wasn't married to who oh, no. he was married to. I don't even want to hear that. Oh, good. Are God. you serious? The I son of a promoter? Let's run around and ask all those old Memphis guys. By the way, where's your daddy's promotion these days? Yeah. Like, and weren't you the WCW champ when they went under? You were one of those top guys. No. Of course no, not, because they figured out that shit wasn't working. Okay. Yeah. We'll get into the last dying days of WCW. When Ric Flair walks to the ring in loafers and street clothes. You talk about backing up to the pay window and taking a check. The last pay-per-view, me and Flair against Dusty and Dustin. And Flair, his big ego, completely out of control. He can't put on boots and tights. And now here we are 20-something years later, and he wants to go out. Yeah, he's going to go out all right. It's, it's, it's kind of cute that you're critical of him now after you've been on this podcast for a year and a half saying, oh, I was a horseman, I was a horseman. Oh, that's BS. Well, I played along with y'all silliness. I mean, how much longer do we go on with Los Cuatro's Caballeros and this and that playing around with silly games? I guess the game's in so funny in that parking lot when Rick's screaming like a uh, on his back, like a turtle. And then, then all of a sudden, I, Conrad, go back and watch. He slided me at the press conference and backstage. You heard him. Oh, I got two tickets here. I got two tickets there. He couldn't wait to get on stage to do that. He couldn't wait to get out there with Mike Keith and Hey, yeah. Draw money in Nashville. Here's two tickets for you and your old man. I'll teach you guys how to draw money. Are you kidding me? Conrad? It's one thing 
to do it backstage and have fun with it. He he goes and has Silva make up these two tickets. Come on, dude. Do you do you really think that was right? Seriously. Now, just answer that. Let, let's 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 answer My, answer that. So you're saying if somebody slights you, it's okay to stab them in the head. I just want to make sure. It's one thing to to piggyback his success, dream to wear his belt and be in his faction and steal his finishing move and his strut and. You just oh, I, your- I forgot he, 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 he patented the strut, he, which he didn't, which is a joke. How he shuffles Jackie Fargo made your boy, buddy Rogers or the original strutters. And so Rick owns the figure four. No, I'm just saying you're a great value. Rick flair with your blonde hair and your figure four and your struts. <laughs> Conrad, you're digging pal. You well, look, look really- behind you. Two of the three of those belts are synonymous with Rick flair. No, they're not synonymous. Yes, they are. What? Yeah, buddy. And okay, you're drinking the Kool Aid, pal. You are absolutely drinking the Kool Aid. You, you don't think that the the domed globe and the big gold belt, those two belts behind you, are synonymous with Ric Flair? His name is attached to them. They're not synonymous. Dory Funk, Briscoe, do I Harley Race, Jeff Jarrett? Come on now. Which one of these is not like the other? No, hey, I'm talking about the NWA belt. Yeah. Rick was one of many good to great champions. And he managed to be one of those great champions without having to own the promotion in order to get the belt. Oh, here we go. Conrad. Yeah. yeah. What, what happened when you were doing the podcast and saying, Hey, yeah. Uh, the only guy who I knew would show up because we weren't financially able to put guys to long-term deals. What happened to that statement? Well, no, that's factual. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. And then we want to talk about the, the big, big gold one. Yeah. The one that Rick took up to WWE. Yes. Oh, okay. That's yeah. And Crockett sits on the back of the bus and saying, yeah, we didn't get to end the right way. Well, no kidding. You moron. This episode is brought to you by car shield who makes it easy and affordable to protect my car from expensive repairs. And that's just for starters. 